Yeah, I want it to sound sort of mysterious and that. Yeah. Yeah, wait. Oh, uh, good evening, Ravers. One of the world's biggest mysteries, dating back to ancient times. And one of man's long standing unanswered questions. It, yeah, yeah, and woman's, yeah. One of man's and woman's long standing unanswered questions concerns the stone circles. And what the bloody hell are they all about? Maybe they're a really impractical way for folk to tell time. Or a set of cricket stumps for giants. Or maybe. One of them outdoor gyms that uh, folk do pull-ups off and stuff like that. But do stone circles hold mystical powers? Are they capable of channeling forces of evil? Welcome to Ray Ruttles' World of the Occult. Occult! Occult! Cult! Dean uh, had a father-son bonding trip uh, as we popped down to Wiltshire to investigate in person the mystical properties of stone circles. It has been written since the beginning of time, even unto these ancient stones, that evil supernatural creatures exist in a world of darkness. Crikey, uh, it's given me the willies already. Because for years, film and teller have portrayed stone circles as having mystical significance, ain't they? And if there's ever art that's set in medieval or ancient times, then they'll often have them swanning round a stone circle because it gives him artistic license to make weird and magical things happen, don't it? The powers of light and darkness are with you. And when I say magical, I ain't talking about Michael Prade's mullet. But there must be summit in it. Uh, the stone circles, not his mullet. Uh, yeah, there must be summit in the mystical properties of the stone circles. Because the druids have been conducting ceremonies at the stone circles for years, ain't they? Like the summer and winter solstices. Er, uh, solstice, solstice, solstu, solstice. Uh, I, uh, I don't think they're druids. Uh, probably just dickheads. And perhaps the most famous stone circle of them all is, of course... Stonehenge. Yes, Stonehenge. Immortalised in popular culture due to its status as the most architecturally sophisticated prehistoric stone circle in the world. So that was where me and Dean were heading, but on the way we decided to stop off to investigate the mysterious sounding wood end. Many objects and animal bones among the posts. Uh, uh, yeah, fragments of human bone are also found. Oh, uh, bloody hell. It's a bit macabre, ain't it? Sinister. Maybe it were human sacrifices to channel the forces of evil. It's all made of concrete. It ain't even wood. They're just concrete bollards. It doesn't feel very mystical, does it? 
it's fair to say the main dean were nickel underwhelmed by Wood End, but we were hoping to experience something a little bit more mystical at Stonehenge. But I was mindful that I would need to use all my concentration to resist the urge to whip my kit off. Because that's the other thing uh, that stone circles make you do, isn't it? You know, the, the mystical powers that they have. They, they give you this unstoppable urge to get your kit off and run around in nude. Uh, either that or these folk are just exposing their sense for no good reason uh, and should probably be arrested. Now, for some folk, they'll do the nudie dancing round the stone circle because they believe that the magical powers will help with fertility, uh, like uh, in this scene in The Wicker Man. Yeah, The Wicker Man, which is famous for some of the most spine-chilling and horrifying imagery in movie history. Oh, God! Oh, Jesus Christ! Yeah, Christopher Lee, dressed up like Janis Joplin. Oh, he looks bloody ridiculous, doesn't he? Prancing about uh, as he's leading a load of extras from Magical Mystery Tour to some magical, mystical ceremony at the Stone Circle. And one of the folk in the procession were Britt Eklund, famously married to Peter Sellers. I think she went out with Rod Stewart and all for a bit. But she were a go-to bit of crumpet in the 1970s. You might remember she were in the Bond film, Man with Golden Gun, uh, as Miss Goodnight. Uh, and her role seemed to consist of running around in a bikini. There weren't much depth to it, you know. And why she would call Goodnight, uh, I've no idea. Seemed uh, like it was just an excuse for this joke at the end. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a good joke though, ain't it? <laughs> oh, Roger. Now, Eklund also got a kit off in Wicker Man. Although, here's a good film fact for you. Uh, that weren't her doing the gyrating in the nude. Uh, apparently, she were up the duff at the time. So, they had to get a body double in for the nude dancing. Uh, and as you can see, she's nowhere near the stone circle. Uh, so that just shows the power of these stone circles, doesn't it? Uh, that it can make you take your clothes off and gyrate around in the nip. And Edward Woodward is really fighting to resist the temptation to rip his own clothes off and start dancing around Starkers. And that's why this scene is absolutely integral to the plot, uh, as opposed to just being gratuitous titillation. Um, yeah. Here we go, son. Stonehenge, just around the corner. Oh, bloody hell, look at the car park. It's chocker. Oh, it's going to take us something ages to park, ain't it? Bloody hell. Tons of folk here, ain't there? I wonder, uh, wonder if they'll all be getting nude due to the power of the stones. The coppers will have their work cut out, won't they? Having to round up thousands of nudists. Right, you can park up, so I'm going to go and find out how much it is. Right, where are we looking? Bloody hell! Yeah, my wife Denise were right. Uh, we should have joined the English Heritage. Uh, it would have been free then. At least it would be for me. Nineteen quid. Uh, for me, it's a concession, and 21 quid for Dean. And that's doing the tight ass non gift aid uh, donation. Yeah, you're chucking over 40 quid to look at a load of old stones. I know we've come a long way, but it's over 40 quid, mate. We ain't going. No. It, I, I don't give a shit. It costs over 40 quid. We ain't going. We're going to go to Avebury instead, because uh, that's free. Yeah, Dean weren't happy, because I, I had promised him that I'd pay for everything. But, you know, you've got to draw a line somewhere, ain't you? So we headed off to Avebury, uh, which is just up the road from Stonehenge. Uh, and it's an echo village, surrounded by a stone circle. And it was featured in the 1970s children's teleprogram, Children at Stone. Yeah, 
Yeah, it was pretty weird and dark uh, for a kids' program. Uh, and the theme tune uh, were pretty disturbing. And it were accompanied by arty close-ups of the stones, presumably to try and highlight the mystical powers and weirdness of it all. And it starred a classically trained actor, uh, Gareth Thomas, from the Royal Shakespeare Company, who took every opportunity to demonstrate his training uh, and his ability to enunciate. Pretty phantasmagorical, with an F, which means more fantastic than fantastic. <laughs> Rubbish, it's PH, as in phantasmagoria, a series of illusions or phantoms. <laughs> yes, he's laughing there at his uneducated son's poor grasp of language. And he was the same uh, when he was Blake uh, in Blake 7. Uh, brilliant enunciation. Having to find a problem, the first step towards a solution is the acquisition of data. His delivery of some of them lines in the script, far beyond the capabilities of a lesser actor. Check out his range here as he goes from softly spoken to livid. Very soon now, they're going to come and take one of you away. And there is nothing you can do to stop that happening. Because there is no way I am going to order that ship to land. But the choice is very simple. You can either fight or you can die. Well, well, I'm with you. Marvellous stuff. Yeah, he's doing his best with scripts, but he knows he's too good for it, doesn't he? He knows he's too good for it. But presumably he had a mortgage to pay. Any road, uh, in Children at Stones, uh, is investigating the powers and energies of the stones uh, for some university research project or some such. And presumably, because it's a kids' programme, nobody takes their clothes off. But there is a bit of weird, sinister dancing. I suspect if it had been after a watershed, they'd have all been nude. But when Gareth Thomas touches the stone, you can see it does have weird mystical powers because it makes him freeze, so he looks like he's having a really relieving piss. And then it superimposes 1970s graphics all over his face. And then the power becomes too much for him because it flings him into the air. And this physicality is a great example of his Royal Shakespeare Company training. And he rode up. Uh, Avebury, uh, it were buzzing when we arrived. Uh, loads of tourists of all different nationalities experiencing the wonder and mystery of the stones. And there were quite a few sheep knocking about and all, as evidenced by the copious amounts of sheep feces, or sheces, if you will. Uh, no, no, forget that. And after taking a few arty close-ups of the stones, I got down to the real reason for visiting, to investigate the mystical powers and energies of the stones. I'm now going to touch the stone to find out whether it really does channel mystical powers. Okay, do. Oh yeah, I can feel something happen. Mm, yeah, something warm. Yeah, I've stood in a sheep shit. Well, I can tell you, the stones were definitely transmitters for evil forces. All over my bloody shoe. Luckily for me though, the stones didn't seem to hold any mystical properties because I never felt overcome with an urge to take all my clothes off and I weren't overpowered by the energy of the stones like Gareth Thomas were. Bet the poor bloke were rolling in she sees, weren't it? Imagine the dry cleaning bill. No, I think I got most of it shit off. What should we do now then? No, we're not going to f***ing do Stonehenge! So, my investigation into stone circles has concluded uh, that they don't have mystical properties. Stonehenge has turned into a little bit of a tourist trap. Uh, brave, Bray. Uh, it's very nice. Get your send down Avery and, and go and get your an ice cream uh, and have a mooch around. Just make sure uh, that you don't stand in the sheep shed. Uh, and it's much better value uh, than Stonehenge because uh, it doesn't cost anything apart from the car park. Any road, uh, join me next time 
will now will conduct another investigation into the world of the occult. Okie doke.